All right, now that we know the life cycle of a virus and basic bacteria, we're going to look next at diseases and things that are caused by viruses. The very first one that I want to talk about is we're going to talk about the AIDS virus. Now, the reason the AIDS virus is asked a whole lot about on the tax test typically is because it is a global problem. It is a problem that the world is trying to deal with. Millions and millions and millions of people are contracting the AIDS virus. So a little bit of background for you. First, the AIDS virus is what is called a retrovirus. A retrovirus. Now, different kinds of viruses, and it basically works in this same format as uh, we were learning basic viruses with the lysogenic uh, cycle where it's just stuck in the DNA, and then the lytic cycle in which it starts going to work taking over the cell. Retroviruses are a little different. Now, there are other retroviruses, um, things like the common cold is a retrovirus as well. But let, let's talk about the AIDS virus for a second. The AIDS virus affects what are called helper T cells in the body. You and I have a, an immune system, and that immune system is what protects us <clears throat> from things like viruses and bacteria. As a matter of fact, the body fights off thousands of bacteria and viruses that never cause us to get sick. Our body jumps on it and attacks it and kills it. Well, helper T cells are very important in the body because these helper T cells are the ones that go around the body like little soldiers checking out the body to figure out what's you and me and what is not. And so it detects any kind of alien things in our body, any kind of foreign things, if you like that word better, that, that are not us, and so it's ready to attack it. Well, the AIDS virus actually attacks and kills helper T cells. So that means it no longer, we don't have these little soldiers walking around in our body finding what is foreign to the body. And so it's a major problem with the immune system. Now the crazy part about the AIDS virus is that when the AIDS virus infects, it will drop its DNA in, cut the DNA open of the human cell, and stick its DNA in there. Now again, we don't know where it's located at all. It looks just like our DNA with A's and T's and C's and G's, and it can sit there for a long time. As a matter of fact, sometimes it sits as long as 10 years before it ever starts to take over the cell. This is one of the reasons why it's really dangerous because it can be passed on to many, many different people within that 10 year period of time. And uh, when, it's, when you have the AIDS virus in your system, they say that you have HIV, which is in the blood, they pick up different detectors that are showing that you have the virus, but you don't full blown have AIDS. It's in, HIV is in this section, it's sitting in your cells. So every time your cells reproduce, it, it is being reproduced in your cells. When you have full-blown AIDS is when it starts taking over the cells and they're running out of control. The HIV virus can sit there as long as 10 years before it is ever turned on. And so that's what makes it incredibly dangerous. Now there are other retroviruses that I mentioned a while ago. You, you know that we do not have a cure for the common cold as well. And so these wet retroviruses are, are some that can give us a little bit of a problem. Let me explain what a retrovirus does for the cold as well as for the AIDS virus. This right here is the key to my classroom. And this key works because it has all the different bumps on the key. When I stick it in the lock, those bumps move little tumblers or little ball bearings on the inside of the lock. And when it moves them all the correct way, then the door unlocks. If I took this key out to the sidewalk and I started scraping it on the sidewalk real hard for two or three minutes, if I scrape off that little bump right there, this key doesn't work anymore. It won't work anymore because it's not the right combination of bumps to work inside the lock. That's sort of what happens with the AIDS virus is we're trying to find different kinds of medication to stop the AIDS virus. What happens is we start getting close in medication and then it rearranges or it scrambles up its DNA. That's what retroviruses do. It scrambles its DNA so the key that used to work, the medicine that would work, no longer works. You're going to have a key that looks completely different 
And the, to the human eye, you'd have to look really, really close to see it. But this does not have the same bump sequence on the top of the key. This doesn't work anymore. So that's what happens with the retrovirus. It scrambles up its DNA in such a way that the medicines that we had that were working don't work anymore. So you have to start over and you have to get better medications. So the AIDS virus is sort of a pet question. They like to ask about this one because it's a global problem. It's based on viruses and the information you have. But a little bit about the AIDS virus should help you with any questions they ask you. Now, the AIDS virus isn't the only one that's around. There are other pieces of information you need to know as well. So here's what I'm going to give you. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you to make this a little easier to see. Let me back up once. Here are some disorders that are caused by viruses. What you'll want to do at this time is you will want to um, pause the video and write these down. I'll give you a second to do that. Now we were just talking about the AIDS virus and it is transmitted by sexual contact and then there's information about the symptoms what happens and they do that for each of these and these are just some examples of viruses most of us have probably had the chicken pox or had the virus the uh, immunization so that we do not get the chicken pox the cold we've all had that Ebola probably not uh, the flu measles mumps rubella that shot right there for example is one you have to have before you can get into school so probably none of us have had measles mumps or rubella, you've heard of rabies, smallpox that was just mass devastation in the world until we got control of that disease, warts. So you'll notice some of them are really, really bad like the AIDS virus and then other things aren't. Warts are caused by viruses as well, but we know how to kill them pretty easily. We can freeze them, have them cut off. West Nile virus as well. These are all viruses that cause different diseases and what happens. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you the same kind of information for bacteria. There are different disorders that are caused by bacteria as well and it's in the same format here. So um, I'll give you a couple of seconds to uh, pause the video. Let me zoom out just a little bit so that's a, you can get the whole thing. I'll give you a couple of seconds and you can write all that down. I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Now here are some diseases that are caused by bacteria. The bubonic plague, the black plague is what it was called, caused by infected fleas would transmit it and it gives you all the different symptoms that you would have had if you had the bubonic plague. This one we really have under control. Uh, Lyme disease, hunters sometimes get that from animals um, that they kill. If you kill a deer and it has a tick on it that has Lyme disease, you can actually get it. Swelling in the joints kind of thing. Doc, go see the doctor. They can take care of that. Strep throat. We've all had that one. Tetanus. You stop, if you step on a rusty nail, you had to have your tetanus shot every 7 to 10 years. Tooth cavities are caused by bacteria. Tuberculosis, typhoid fever. There's many, many things that are caused by bacteria. These are just a few examples so that you have some to sort of look at. These are some of the disorders that are caused by bacteria and viruses.